Here it is. Most important meal of the day. Breakfast. I don't like eggs. I think that's because last time I used chicken eggs, and this time I'm using coyote eggs. <laughs> Give me a break. Coyotes don't lay eggs. They're mammals. Jack, you're thinking about your American coyotes. Your North Pole coyotes? Can't stop them from laying eggs. <laughs> That's why Eskimos are always walking behind them with a skillet. <laughs> Do not throw these eggshells away. We're not done with them yet. Bo, let me see this, Mark. Morning, Hamilton men and Rodney. Morning. Morning, Barry. Want some breakfast? We're having coyote eggs. Coyote eggs? Mmm, I love those. They go good with snake milk. You have snake milk? Reptiles don't make milk, genius. Well, that is it, Jack. When you come home from school today, I want you playing video games. No more Discovery Channel for you. Hey there. Oh, how you doing, sweetheart? We're having a little bit late. Boys, let's get going. We gotta get on the road. Honey, I don't think Jack's feeling real well. He says his eyes are all itchy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, Jack, that there is a spit take. Hard to pull off, but... Once you find it, it's like finding the sweet spot on the baseball bat. Yeah, your daddy's got a sweet spot on his head. I think maybe I'll find it. It's right here. All right, well, you clean up the coffee. Let's go, boys. Let's get going. Come on, get the line out. Hey, Rodney. Yeah? I stopped by to ask you a favor. A favor? Barry, I already work for you so you can supplement my income. I let you come to my comedy gigs and you laugh at jokes you've already heard. Haven't I done enough for you already? <laughs> You remember that tornado that came through a couple years ago and took out that wing of the public library? Oh, yeah, that was a bad one. They say the books on trailer parks were hardest hit. <laughs> well, uh, since I rebuilt the library for free, mm. the mayor wants to give me some kind of a plaque. Oh, man, Barry, that's great. Proud of you. Yeah, but uh, they also want me to make a speech tomorrow. So I was thinking that maybe you could help me out with a couple of jokes or something. Oh, Barry. Didn't you tell them that speaking in public scares the hell out of you? That when you do, you start to shake and stutter and sweat? Well, I tried. The whole darn committee was on the phone, and... Well, then I started to shake and stutter, and then... <laughs> and then, my lower intestine made this sort of gurgly sound that sounded like, okay. Okay, here, try this. This is funny. <sighs> Mr. Mayor, members of the Tulsa Chamber of Commerce, thank you. I just want to say there's one big difference between me and a tornado. I'm not as much of a blowhard. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's a great icebreaker joke. I'm not sure that's any kind of a joke. <laughs> well, maybe if you did it right. Are you fluent in any other language other than dull? Charlie, why can't you go to a laundromat? Because, Rodney, those are for poor people. And besides, I can't afford it. Listen, Barry is receiving a plaque from the mayor tomorrow. So if you don't mind, make yourself useful and listen to his speech. And don't be shy about laughing at this icebreaker joke. <laughs> it's really pretty hilarious. <laughs> All right, let her rip. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the Tulsa... Oh. Does somebody just say, okay? That's it. I can't do this. Charlie, go do your laundry. Okay. Look, Barry, this is a vocal exercise for public speaking. Just say red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, over and over again. Okay. Uh, red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. <laughs> Are you just messing with me? <laughs> This is really, this is a proven vocal technique that uh, has been used by actors and news reporters and leather salesmen for years. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather. Fine, Jack, you go hide out back, but I'm bringing your father to talk to you as soon as I get him as good and mad as I am. What's the problem? Your son got detention today. What did he do now? I think I'll let him tell you himself. Barry, I'll be right back. Uh, red leather, yellow leather, red leather. <laughs> red leather. What is he doing? He's in the market for a beanbag chair. <laughs> Jack. 
Your mom tells me you had a little trouble at school today. I want you to know I'm disappointed in you. Me and your mom did not raise the kind of boys who get detention, and we're not going to tolerate that kind of behavior. Now, you want to tell me what happened? I stuck eggshells in my eyes and made my new teacher spit water. <laughs> How much are you loving this moment right now? Start dancing, monkey boy. <clears throat> Look, Jack, it's my job to make people laugh. It's your job to go to school and do the best that you can. And making your teacher spit water over the whole fourth grade class is not correct classroom behavior. Your mom's right. You start cutting up in class, people start having a good time and laughing, and then... Back to you, Trina. <laughs> Jack, if you're not careful, you're going to get a reputation as a troublemaker, and then you're going to end up in detention every day. You understand? Yes. Good. Good. Hey, uh, let me ask you something. How did you get those eggshells to school without breaking them? I packed them in cotton, then I added a little red lines to make them look bloodshot. That's good. <laughs> <clears throat> but also bad. <laughs> Three hours to my speech. Where's a damn tornado when you need one? Mary, help me out. You know, when you lose a golf bag, you don't have a problem going to a wedding dressed like a bridesmaid. Excuse me. It was double or nothing. I was the bride. <laughs> exactly. So why are you so embarrassed to get up in front of people and make a speech? I'm fine embarrassing myself when I'm trying to. I... You know, Rodney, I'm going to tell you something I never told anybody. My greatest fear in life is embarrassing myself in public when I'm trying to be serious. <laughs> what? Nothing. There's a pigeon on my head, isn't there? Well, you see, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, look, Barry, we're gonna try another exercise. Instead of speaking in public, you start by singing. Not speaking, singing. So what? If a guy's afraid of drowning, you tell him he's not swimming, he's diving? Either way, I'm still at the bottom of the pool. All right, Barry. On your feet. You're going to sing My Country Tis of Thee right here, right now. Oh, no, wait. Just a second. What are you doing? Nothing. It's just a little nosebleed. No big deal. It's just my body's way of dealing with stress by trying to kill itself. <laughs> oh, come on, Barry. You've been singing since elementary school. Just do it. Oh, God. All right. Uh. My country tis of thee. Sweet land, Sweet land of liberty. Of thee I sing. Land where my God You did it, you're fine. Well, wasn't as bad as I expected, but you know, I still needed help, even though it was a song I knew. Barry, you're ready. You know the speech. You sang a song in public and survived, and we've been real careful not to put anything in your stomach. It's gonna say something later you'll regret. Okay. Just remember. Okay. I'll be at that ceremony with you. I won't let you fail. I'm okay. there for you, buddy. Okay. Hello? Hey, honey. Okay. I gotta go. Would it kill somebody to close a wind in this place? <laughs> What's going on? Is Jack okay? Oh, yeah, he's fine. In fact, you'll enjoy this. Seems as though he took a ball of rubber cement, stuck it up his nose, and pulled it out like a giant booger. <laughs> Ain't that a hoot? Damn. He's only 10 and he's doing jokes on a seventh grade level. <laughs> Rodney, this is serious. Now he's got to stay every day after school this week. I mean, it's like he wants detention. A week of detention for a booger joke? That's a two-day offense, Tops. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton, hi. I'm Linda Preston. I'm Jack's teacher. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you're Miss... You're Miss Preston? Yes. <laughs> Why? 
I just wasn't expecting someone as much as uh, you uh, are. Rodney, I'm sorry. Usually my husband's a little more articulate than that. You know, that's really interesting because sometimes Jack has the same problem. <laughs> I bet he does. What are you talking about? Miss Preston, you're not the same teacher Jack has detention with, are you? Well, yes, I am. <laughs> okay. I think I got it. Let's go, honey. Come on, it's obvious. <laughs> am I alone here? Anybody? <laughs> Miss Preston, I honestly think I can straighten all this out if you just give me a second to talk to Jack. Oh, I agree. You need to talk to your son. But first, I think we need to examine the possibility that Jack could have a disorder, like ADD or ADHD. It's not about that. He doesn't have a disorder. Believe me, everything's working just fine. <laughs> a little too good, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Which, obviously, you don't. Miss Preston, could you give us a minute, please? Oh, of course. I'll be outside. Come on, Rodney. We both know what the problem is, and it is not a disorder. You're right. He doesn't have ADD. He's horny. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Jack can't be having those feelings. He's only 10. Trina, it's the way boys are. When I was his age, I was all worked up over Pebbles Flintstone. <laughs> the grown-up version, not the baby kind. Come on. I'm serious. Leggy, tiger dress, bone in her hair. Mm. <laughs> I'm not real proud of it, but it worked for me. Rodney, you just don't want to admit the fact that he's been imitating you, and now he's becoming a troublemaker. He's becoming a troublemaker because Miss Preston supervises detention. If she coached basketball, he'd be the next Michael Jordan. If she taught music, he'd be the next Mozart. And if she taught dentistry, I think two examples is enough. Hello? Red leather, yellow leather. What's wrong? Every news crew in town is here. I'm backing out. No, no, don't go anywhere. I'll be right there. Honey, I gotta go. You're just gonna leave in the middle of a crisis? We don't have a crisis. What we have is a son with a penis. <laughs> and when I get home, I'll give them both a good talking to. So Jack's got a crush on his teacher. Oh, everybody's got someone but me. <laughs> We're not talking about the cute kid kind of crush here. According to Rodney, Jack has sexual feelings for his teacher. And then she thinks it's ADD or... Hmm. Well, I don't know much about attention deficit disorder, but... Hey, look at that squirrel. <laughs> I just think that Rodney is putting his own gross man feelings on our little boy. I mean, Jack won't even make eye contact with the girl. Well, he'll get to her eyes eventually. <laughs> What are you doing? He doesn't want to spend time in attention with Miss Preston, and I can prove it. Yum. Hey, sweetie. How'd you like to skip school tomorrow? We can go play mini golf. We can go to the movies. Anything you want, and I'll write you a note. I can. I got school and stuff. <laughs> well, forget school. You can sit on the couch and watch TV like a zombie all day and eat any kind of junk food you want. I told you I can't. If you don't sit on that couch and watch TV like a zombie and eat junk food until you puke, you're in trouble. You can't make me. I have to go to detention. <laughs> oh, honey, are you okay? My baby's growing up. Oh, man, why didn't I just charge the city for working on the library? I meant to send him a bill. Is it all just a terrible accounting error? <laughs> Boys, settle down. Hey, Bear. Congratulations on your award. Thank you. Uh, I can't remember your name. Mr. Martin, we're ready for you. Oh, God. Don't worry, buddy. I'll be on the front row. Is this at all noticeable? Yeah. <laughs> Moist is the new black. <laughs> hey, listen. I think that you might be right about Jack. Oh, honey, I know, but don't worry. He's not gonna all grow up at once. There's still a lot of little boy left in that kid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I think I just saw him look up that newscaster's skirt. <laughs> my boy. <laughs> I'm gonna go help Barry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll please take your seats. 
Sorry, sir. The front row is for the mayor's staff only. You need to sit in the back. Uh, no, Don't. I work for the mayor. I'm his chief of staff. That's the mayor's chief of staff. Could you keep it down? He doesn't know it yet. Back of the room, chief. Welcome to the newly reopened Prairie Avenue Library. God, well, let me sit up front. Brought to you by the generosity of our guest of honor. I am pleased to present this plaque of appreciation to Mr. Barry Martin. I'm sorry, did you just say it okay? <laughs> Mr. Barry Martin. Uh, 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 Mr. Mayor, uh, <clears throat> red leather, yellow leather, red leather. The difference between you and a tornado. What? What are you doing? I'm cueing him. Pull hard. Pull hard! <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you might say that the only difference between me and a tornado is that I'm not as much of a blowhard. <laughs> <laughs> My country tis. Big old fool. What? You're a big old fool, Barry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One, uh, one time I hit a hole in one, and they gave me a little trophy, and like a big old fool, I built an entire case for it. <laughs> Where was it? Uh... Tiny thing. You got a tiny thing, Barry. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's it, buddy. And you know, that trophy sure was a tiny thing. But uh, now that I've got this plaque, I have something else to put in my trophy case. Thank you, everybody. Are they taking Dad? Dad? We don't know that man. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> Jack, I need to talk to you. See this. Huh? Let's get right to it. What's going on with you and Miss Preston? Jack, we're just a couple of guys talking here. You know, man to man. I just like being around her, that's all. She's pretty, and she smells good. She just makes me feel different. Mm-hmm. I think I love her, Dad. <laughs> yeah, buddy, it sounds like you got all the symptoms. She feel the same way about you? Well, she does keep giving me detention. <laughs> the other day, she said my lunchbox was really cool. Oh, man, she's got it bad, Jack. <laughs> Well, I guess the next step is you, you're going to have to move in with her. No? Huh? Yeah, that way you can carpool to school together. I, I thought we could just keep seeing each other in detention. No, you can't do that. Well, why not? Well, son, you got to put yourself in her position. You know, after you and Miss Preston are married, you're going to be out at fancy dinner parties with important people like Principal Nidecker. And she's liable to be embarrassed about having a husband who's in detention all the time. Jack, you know how lucky you are. You found the love of your life and you're only 10 years old. Hey, Dad. Mm hmm Maybe I'm not really in love. You think maybe it's just a crush? I had a lot of crushes when I was your age. Ever on a teacher? Miss Gatewood, fifth grade. <clears throat> She had such long blonde hair and such a beautiful smile and such an amazing set of encyclopedias. Dad? I'm sorry. Um, so you done with the detention? Yeah. That's good. Well, why don't you go get ready for bed? I love you, Dad. I love you, buddy. Love you too, Mom. I love you. Wow, you're good. That's what I keep telling you. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, when you have kids, they grow up so fast. Oh, yeah. I wish I just had a pause button and I could keep them little forever. Hmm, I wouldn't worry about that too much. The rate Jack's going, you're gonna have grandbabies to play with in no time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, you know, if it makes you feel any better, I promise I'll never grow up. Oh, honey, I gave up on that years ago. <laughs> Mom, hmm. can I have a glass of water? Jack, it's a tiny house. You can get it yourself. It's okay, Jack. I'll get it. You go to bed, I'll bring it to you, and I'll tuck you in. Thanks, Mom. Hmm. My baby still needs me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, thanks again for all your help, Rodney. Couldn't have done it without you. Anytime. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting word, anytime. Kind of means like whenever. Like, you know, whenever somebody needs help. Good you... Lord, Barry, what you do now? <laughs> Last month, I sponsored a Little League team, and now they want to make me the keynote speaker at their team banquet. You have got to stop doing nice things for people. Don't I know it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Heavenly. <laughs> 